My name is uh, Jim Conlon from RCB Radio Sport, West Clare, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. As part of our championship, senior championship and intermediate championship football build-up preview, uh, we're, we're previewing all the six ties in the senior championship, uh, football championship, and we're previewing all the six ties in, in the immediate championship. This evening, we're looking at the tie between Cora Finn and Kildysert, and I'm delighted to be joined by a member of the Cora Finn management team, Pat Curtis. I suppose, Pat, if I can start off by asking you, I've asked a few clubs uh, this already. Early on in the year, there was Husey Cup, Gary Cup, Division 3 sort of campaigns. Team, some teams got a game before COVID-19 started, other teams didn't. Were you one of the lucky ones? Did you manage to get a game in at all, a league game at the start of the year? Yeah, yeah, Jim, we were uh, we were one of the lucky ones, I suppose, if you call it lucky. And uh, we got a first round game in against Court Clare. The day itself was was probably the one of the worst days we've ever played football in. So I'm not sure about lucky, but uh, yeah, we got a game in, and uh, we were lucky enough to win it on the day because I Court Clare, I think we're missing their county players. I think for the first league league round of the league, I think all the county players were were held. So uh, we managed to get over that one. A, a tight enough margin, I think, on the day. Yeah, I suppose um, in terms of last year, in terms of two, 2019, I suppose for for some clubs, there were memorable years, I suppose, for Corfin, it was probably a year to forget. I, I know that you had a good bit of underage sex, success, but uh, at adult level, things just, uh, things, I suppose, you got on a bad run and it started to carry it through and you weren't able to save yourselves. And, I suppose last year as well were, was the strong was the squad um, de strengthened. Were you missing key sort of players? Were you under strength last year? Uh, last year was a kind of a strange year. We had we started off the year really really well, and I think we won maybe our first five or six league games. But ended up then losing uh, our last maybe couple of games, and we missed out on qualification to the QZ Cup. I think on scoring difference on yeah, the QZ Cup, Gary Cup semi finals. So we missed out and. That kind of form kind of carried into the into the championship then for us, where we were, I suppose, we met Kilmurray in the first round, which is a daunting enough kind of a prospect, and uh, we had a man sent off, which didn't work out great for us on the day. So, um, I was at your Lissy uh, Casey game. You were competitive in that. That could have gone yeah. anywhere. Yeah, we were in Lissy Casey. We were competitive right up to maybe we got just caught, caught for a goal midway through the second half, having kicked a few wides early on as well. And so we felt we were competitive enough in that game, and and then kind of core player got a good few goals in us in the championship. And then we probably played our best football against Kilrush in the in the actual relegation final. And it was a game we kind of felt we haven't looked at the video since. We kind of felt we should have still won it, and just a couple of breaks and maybe decisions didn't go our way on the day and but at the same time when you lose four or five games in a row you kind of deserve to go down so um, we had no complaints on, on that front even though it was massive disappointment to the club and massive disappointment to the players being inside in the dressing room after was a, was not a, a great place to be and just massive disappointment from everyone involved and put in what we thought was a really good effort to Especially when things started going away, the boys really buckled, buckled down into it and, and, and tried their hardest and trained really well. But just we never, we just never got it across the line. And I suppose Pat, we all know the value of scoring forwards. And last year you were deprived of a Clare senior footballer who picked up an awful bad in, injury. He missed uh, the under twenties campaign for Clare as well. Uh, Garod Cahill. And how is Garod shaping up? I know he's on the way to recovery. Uh, he has been getting closer and closer. Uh, is he in line to feature in this championship in the early mm-hmm. rounds, or he is? Is he as the championship goes on? Hopefully for Corfin, he'll play a role. Yeah, we we're hopeful Garrod will be back okay by the time the championship comes. As I say, he 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 suffered a real severe injury, maybe I suppose a bit later on the year last year. And uh, but Garrod is a relentless worker and has put every effort into trying and to get back fit. So we're hopeful with as much time as we can get that we that he'll play some part in this championship. Yeah, we'd be hopeful. 
And I suppose uh, we mentioned uh, one cattle, but you have another cattle joining uh, your ranks this year. Uh, I know him all too well in, in from uh, Clare Underage setups. A fantastic, brilliant footballer, and also say a brilliant hurler as well. Dermot, a uh, really yeah. skillful guy. This guy he can pick a ball, he can pick open a defence uh, or I even needle at Dermot. So it must be a real exciting addition to have a young player of that real quality, especially. At the intermediate grade as well, um, well, senior grade is, is very competitive. But intermediate grade for Dermot starting off will be a, a good learning curve for him. Oh, it will be. Yeah, Dermot is 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 a real fabulous player, and but yeah, say Dermot is going to have a real busy time of it now between playing minor hurling, minor football, intermediate hurling, intermediate football. So he's going to have a real busy schedule ahead of him, but. We're, we're, we're lucky enough maybe this year that we have a, a couple of really good young forwards coming through, maybe in Kevin Keane, Robin Mounsey, to name a couple of on uh, Robin being on the Clare on the 20s yeah, this year Robin, as well. Yeah. So, so we'd be hopeful that um, that they'd be adding to our squad this year now in, in our forward line to supplement maybe Jamie or, and, and a few more lads that are up there. Yeah, and I suppose uh, you mentioned Jamie there with the last uh, mention. And I suppose the year which has been is a, a horrible year for everyone and everyone, the Kel concerns and family raising concerns. But I suppose one tiny plus in England for a plus is that Jamie's still around because if COVID-19 had, had its impact, no doubt you'd be facing into an intermediate championship more likely w without Jamie Malone this year due to oh. his travel plans. Oh, most definitely. Um, I don't think Jamie was scheduled to come back till till maybe late August till he was returning to work. Uh, so, in one way, it's been great to have him here. His presence at training has really given a boost to the lads, and the training has uh, has been has been really good for us now. And and the uh, intensity has really up since the draw as well. Now we're we're really kind of looking forward to to the match with Kildare, and uh, kind of it kind of brings it into focus for us a small bit. Yeah, and I suppose when you look at Kildysert, I suppose um, they are a team that have been making a steady process. And I suppose they are the hard luck story in the last two years uh, for the Intermediate Championship. In fairness to Kildysert, people would say they probably deserve their place in the, the Senior Championship. They should have probably gone up by now. They've been so mm -hmm. close to be knocking on the door for one or two years. And they have really put in good work underage. They've been bringing in some real good players and good work has gone into their underage system. You can see by the amount of players that they have mm. in, in the Clare under-20 team. So it's a, t it's a team that's trying to build from the the bottom up, Kildysert, and they've got up to the QZ Cup uh, football this year and that was probably taken away from them in, in terms of COVID-19, in terms of that. So that, they, that would have been the first time for Kildysert in the QZ Cup for... Uh, and no, numerous years. So, Kildare sort of have been a team on an upward trajectory in Clare football in the last few years. Oh, definitely. Kildare sort of are under the day are a match for any team. And, and as you say, they're, they're on the rise with the last number of years. Uh, we played them in an under 21 championship game a number of years ago, and they gave us a good beating on that day now. And you could see some of the players they had were absolutely outstanding players. And you can see from the blend of experience and youth. They have a real nice mix and, and have been really unlucky to come up against a couple of real top teams and just happened to lose by the smallest margin last year against a really highly rated St. Brecken's team. And I, I assume they'll be, they'll be made for redemption this year and, and they'll be on a, a kind of a mission to, to rectify that loss from last year. Yeah, and I suppose for you uh, and for Cora Finn, I'm probably kind of nice looking at it. I suppose it's in terms of people saying, look, it's 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 a bad draw of year, probably two of the championship favourites mm. perceived on paper as a championship favorite, to draw each other. But on one side of the terms, is it really good to get a real stern test in the first round, knowing that uh, the, the, for the winner there's an opportunity advance, but the loser doesn't go out of the championship? Because people are saying, well, if Kildare and Corfin had met in the winner's round, then mm. one of them would be gone. So is it, in one sense... Is it better that you meet now and possibly meet meet again later on in the championship if if that does happen if the loser this game does come through the backdoor route in the three three way playoff? Well, I suppose it's not ideal to meet him, but yeah. if you are to meet him, it's probably better to meet him in the first round than the second round because yeah. if you do meet him in the second round, it's a fifty fifty call of whether you 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 stay in the championship or you go out of it. And at least in the first round, you kind of find out where where you are situated, whether you're up to the pace of what would be an experienced Kildicer team at this level and you and you know whether you're you're there or you're thereabouts with them and if you're 
in, in with a shower 10 minutes ago, you're, you're not in a bad place, even if you want to, to not to be successful on the day, but at least you, you have something to work with. You know you're at the standard, whereas if you played maybe a lesser team and, and you didn't know where you were and you met him in the second round, it could come as a, a bit of a shock to you and you, you could be out of the championship. So yeah, and I suppose... I, yeah, I suppose Pat, many people look at this game and they say to themselves, I was just looking at probably Cork Hare and Brickens in the senior championship and many people think that will go to the wire and possibly uh, extra time in that game because it's very, very hard to call that one. This is another game in the intermediate championship that people think they'll be right uh, in in line in play up until the last maybe kick of the ball that this is the possibility of extra time and this will go to where no team in this game is going to beat each other by five or six or eight or nine points that there will definitely be only one kick of the ball in this game that's the perceived view out there is that a view that you'll share? Oh completely um, especially with Kildaiser I think if memory serves me right the last time we played them in the championship but I think with the last kick of the ball in extra time in injury time that uh that uh, we we managed to get over them the last time, so and, and think that was 2014. But uh, it's always going to be a tough str- struggle with Kildare in the championship, and we'll be expecting nothing, nothing easy there, or nothing soft. And, and we'd be hopeful of, of trying to have a performance ourselves and get ourselves right, and uh, and making sure we're okay on the day. Yeah, and I suppose uh, you look at some of the experienced core players now in, in terms of core fin, and is, is John Keane back for another year in championship? Do you have the access to Shea Malone this year as well? Uh, no, uh, Manus Malone there as well this year as well? No, I mean, we don't have Manus now this year, but uh, we have John. John has returned again this year, thank God. John has, John is now living up the country, so... Uh, John has, is doing a great job in keeping himself fit, and and, and he's uh, he comes down. John is a real club man and comes down every weekend for us, and and uh, he, he John really looks after himself. But we would have a quite well, maybe we, we might have maybe 10, 11 lads that were on the panel in 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 2015 when we won the intermediate championship previously. So uh, we'd be hopeful of trying to get them right and maybe use that experience again to to get over the line. I suppose uh, you have some players that have held uh, important roles in clear panels in the past. Uh, spring to mind Damien O'Loughlin, the minor captain, uh, a few years ago, and uh, his brother Connor, uh, a fantastic footballer. I, I remember as well there was a strong young lad there, uh, James Tierney. Is he playing with Chi anymore? Have you any players that have departed the scene for Corrigan? Uh, no, 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 no. We last no one this year. We, we've kind of with COVID, we've nearly gained a few players because we would have quite a number of players that would have been working in 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 Dublin maybe, mm. and with with the lockdown and stuff, and now we're remote working from home. We seem to have a few more lads around locally. So with the hurling and the football, so so we I don't, to my mind we haven't lost anyone, but um, yeah. this year, but uh, we've got a few games. But no, James is is James still might be playing a bit of junior this year and. Uh, yeah. Damien, of course, is one of our one of our mainstays in, in defence as well. So hopefully he'll be right in the day and and, and uh, he'll be ready for action. And I suppose Corfin, we do know underage systems have been going very well. You're probably one mm. of the favourites for the minor A football championship championship this year, along with uh, Dora Bearfield and Innes Diamond. And, and you have uh, another two or three lads in, in the county minor mm. under 17 football this year. I suppose for those youngsters you mentioned there, like the uh, Dermot and probably Robin Mounsey, a really good footballer, Kim McKee. How important is it for them in terms of playing senior football and get, jumping back up? When you look at the likes of um, Killian McGorry, Killian O'Connor, um, Marco Lachlan, that will be eligible for you next year to expose them to high level of football because you are going to gain county standard players coming through mm-hmm. your academy uh, in the next year or two. So, how important is it to make that bounce straight back up like St. Brickens did? Oh yeah, it would be really important for us. Um, them, them players have, have played the highest level all the way up, and they're they're used to competing against the big clubs and Dennis Diamonds and Dora Bearfields of this world at underage level. And uh, even though they haven't really got over the line, I suppose unluckily, very hard to beat Dennis Diamond these days in, in, in any champ, in any, any underage championship. But uh, they've they've got to the final stages. I mean, they're they're about. So we'd be hopeful that if we can. Get them all right and, and and get to senior level. That we'll be adding a couple of players every year that maybe might hopefully get us into contention, maybe in the senior championship, hopefully, and get us to to get us to maybe the final stages in that. 
And I suppose in terms of uh, Kildaisert as well, uh, just getting back to Kildaisert, they have maybe in the last year or so, one or two or two other players have stepped up and have been called into Cullum Collins' mm-hmm. uh, senior panel, the likes of Emmett McMahon, uh, Kieran O'Brien as mm-hmm. such. And there's expectations that maybe in the next year or two, you might see the likes of Seamus Shem- Casey or Dear Madonna, mm-hmm. who featured prominently for the under-20s, being called right. up uh, to the... Uh, Claire set up, Claire set up as well. So, but the, just in relation to the two boys uh, and Rory McMahon, there was uh, was featured sometimes as well for called in the area party here for mm. Colm. So, how is that going to really? That's going to boost Kildare again, I suppose, having two or three players play, uh, in the Clare senior set up in, under Colm Collins. I know Image has probably played the most out of mm. any of those guys. He was terrific minor in 2018 for Clare. But um, that's going to boost Kildare because it's exposing their players to high level, high level of county training two, three times a week, and that's only going to uh, add um, uh, add um, add, add to their ability again this year. Oh, definitely. Any time you can get a, a player in in the county, he always comes back in fabulous condition and he comes back really experienced and the know-how that Colum and his team inside and Clare bring to these players is, is phenomenal. So when they come back, they're, they're the real leaders in any squad. And if you can get a, a few of them, like say Emmett and, and Seamus Casey and all them, they come back and, and you have Shane McNeil on top of it that has, has the experience previously of being, yeah. being in the squads, it, it, it must add to massively. It has to add to massively. I suppose uh, one important uh, part of the game, we all know how important the midfield battle and the kick-out strategy as well. And mm-hmm. yeah, Kildare would have a really renowned uh, goalkeeper as well in Robert Ayers, uh, a good long wish ago, but a very yeah. good in terms of kick-out and picking out his men. So mm-hmm. that's going to be an important element of the game. Normally people wouldn't say a goalkeeper wouldn't have a vital vital role to play in club championship. We know the role Stephen Cluxton mm-hmm. plays for Dublin. But it's, Robert Ayers is a big player for Kildare. And normally you wouldn't say that about a, a goalkeeper but having such a big, massive impact on the club game. But he does play an important role for Kildare in, 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 in being able to give him a primary ball option. Oh yeah, long gone are the days when a goalkeeper just launched the ball out as far as he can. Uh, Robert is, has a massive boot in him, but he also has a nice, he's a good range, he can kick him long, he can kick him short, he, he has a good range and he's a massive, he can kick the 45s from him as well, so he, he is a, he's a real good player for him and, a, and, a, and it's going to be a, a massive difference for them in the championship going forward, I'd imagine. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Pat, lastly, I suppose, in terms of this championship and, and the format uh, for this championship, we know the simple route uh, for all the teams. You win your first game, you go into the mm-hmm. winner's round, preferably you get a good, good draw there. There's going to be no real easy game in the winner's round because everyone's mm-hmm. going to be coming off uh, momentum and there's going to be some big hitters there as well. But if you win that, you're into the semi-final. You have, you're one of those three teams. You have that bit mm. of advantage. You can get that bit of extra training. And, but, but also the hindsight as well, that you, as one of those three teams, you can go, you can watch that three-way playoff. You can scout your opponents. You can learn as much as you want. And if you're drawn against them in the semi-final as well, you have your homework done on them. So there's a big, massive coup to get to the to get to the semi final, but also there's a bit of weight. But the team, the four place team that gets there, all the same though, they'll be carrying savage momentum because they'll have maybe two, three wins on the bounce mm. built up, and they'll be coming into the game probably the the, the one in semi finals as the farm team. So correct, um, I suppose for us really. We'd be hoping to go the the main the winning route to the to the semi final anyway, and that um, being a dual club, we we'd hope to get the minimum amount of games and and not to build up games after games as after games is kind of tired of lads out. But as you said, the losers group wouldn't be the worst place in the world to be. In that, if you could manage to get through there, you have momentum with the new rules coming in. You have more experience in the new rules coming in. You you'd probably be in a better a better place than maybe most teams when you hit that semi final. So. It wouldn't be the worst place in the world to be now if you if you um, had to go through that losers group either. And uh, the, you mentioned dual players there as well in in terms of Corfin and uh, mm-hmm. in terms of being you are a dual club. You have a, a hurling team. Let us not forget that. Like yeah. you have the same demands that clubs like Bally, Clondigad have mm-hmm. the same cl- demands that Cracklow and Aero have. Mm-hmm. You have those same demands as well. So in terms of that, is, is it a co-jointed approach uh, in terms of the footballers and hurlers? Do you do your fitness work together and they maybe break off and? Uh, uh, do hurling and, and football, or is uh, is it because you probably have? I imagine you probably have a good crossover, maybe 10, 11 dual players on both panels. 
Oh, we'd have more. We'd have easily more than that. Now we'd have. We could. There's maybe three or four lads that don't play hurling. That's about as much that. So we'd have a massive crossover, and uh, we kind of join together for the fitness. Maybe work early on the year, and and maybe try and maybe do a couple of joint sessions until the evenings get longer. And then, at the minute now, it's uh, so we're kind of separated out until the championship comes in, and and uh, but as as the championship comes closer, every team now will get their own time. And uh, say the week before championship, the focus then will be on. New market in the, in the intermediate hurling for us, and then that will switch over to to the football to Kildare on, on the week of football championship. So, and I, I, I suppose Pat, in terms of lastly, we've seen the Gorman Cup format has been changed uh, this mm. year in terms of preliminary round, and there's possibly mm. uh, going to be knockout uh, rounds. So there's a possibility of two games being played for teams that are in the Gorman Cup before championship mm. for teams that probably didn't sign up for the Gorman Cup this year. In terms of, I know I was speaking to Kilfenora there during the week, and this. Mm me about their struggle to get challenge games how difficult mm. it was uh, only back two or three weeks to try and get meaningful uh, uh, challenge games it's just so cut and dry mm. for the teams that are probably dead enter in the Garmin Cup I know Kildare have entered in the Garmin Cup they're going to get possibly two games uh, is it a sort of a advantage as well and how are you finding in terms of trying to get meaningful challenges uh, has it been yeah. a problem for you? Yeah, it's quite difficult kind of get trying to get the challenges in for us. And then, as you say, being a dual club, the Hurland, the Hurland side of the, of the intermediate section, they're looking for their challenge games as well. So you you're you don't get as many probably challenge games as, as would be ideal for you. But uh, you just got to kind of get on with it and make the best of what you have. And But uh, it's, it's it's quite difficult all right now. It is quite difficult. And maybe maybe a round or two of the league would have been an ideal way instead of teams going away looking for challenges. We could have played maybe another round of the league and, and everyone wouldn't have had to work for look for challenges. Hmm. Uh, on that note, uh, Pat Curtis, uh, we wish you and Cora Finn and Colin Clancy and the rest of the Cora Finn management team, your players, uh, your supporters, all the best to look in this intermediate championship as you try and bounce back in the first attempt to the senior grade. Uh, we hope it's a prosperous campaign for you that you achieve the targets that you set out to achieve at, at, at the start of the year and uh, uh, hopefully uh, all going well. Uh, you, you look back fondly on the 2020 uh, Clare Intermediate Football Championship. Uh, Pat Curtis, thanks for taking the time to talk to us this evening. Thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, my name is uh, Jim Conlon from RCB Radio Sport. Uh, Claire, West Clare, live at 92.5 and 94.8 FM and online at www.rcb.ie. As we look ahead to our, the Intermediate Championship build-up, we're delighted to look ahead now to the tie between Kildyser and Cora Finn. I'm delighted to be joined by the Kildyser uh, manager, Noel Gary. And I suppose, uh, Noel, if I can start back, uh, looking back in the last one or two years, uh, the intermediate for championship for Kildare, it's been uh, so, so close, so near, but yes, it the sort of the, the final step in the ladder has eluded you, but you are getting closer. And I suppose as a manager for you as well, you must be awful disappointed that the year that COVID kicked in was the first year in a long time that Kildare were back in the QZ Cup. And you would have got serious, serious games against top-level opposition. And it would have been a real boost uh, for you going into the Intermediate Championship because you would have been the only sort of intermediate club in the, in the QZ Cup. So you'd have got games against Milltown, Kilmoria Bricken, Clondigad, Aeroge, Crack, Aeroge, not Crack, Aeroge, all the big guns, as they say, of Clare senior football. So how disappointing mm. and demoralising was that as a manager, first of all, has that been for you? Um, I suppose uh, being a in Division 1 anyway is a, is a big thing that um, I suppose we've all been striving the last few years that we need to compete at the top level. Uh, we know we're good enough to compete at the top level. Um, so we took a, it, it wasn't a long route up. We came from Division 3 up to Division 2 and got promoted in last year. Uh, to Division 1 when we lost uh, the league final to Dunbeg, um, just lost by two or three points in that. And uh, that brought us up to Division 1 this year. So we played Dunbeg again this year and uh, we beat them by three points. So we were, we were, we were going well now. We, we, we were training hard for the start of the year. The pre-season was good. And, um, you know, we went up, uh, we said we'd compete up there at least. Uh, we, we'd no notions of coming down. 
and we, we were aiming for a semi-final that was that uh, you know we, we think we're good enough to get maybe get six or seven eight points on the board and try and get into a semi-final there the, the QZ Cup you know so that was a, it's a, it's a, it's good to be up there it's, it probably uh, just puts us in a, a place that we need to be you know as a team um, and uh, just shows you how good we are you know going forward with 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 our experience and use, you know, on our team. Yeah, and I suppose, um, Noel, in terms of uh, the panel as such, uh, for you yourself, uh, a number of players have been part of the Clare Under-20 setup uh, this year. They would have uh, been involved with Michael Neal and you had three, maybe four starters on that team. Also, two or three of your team from last year was called up to Colum Collins senior squad as well. So you probably have seven or eight of that Kildicer team now over the last 12 months that have been boosted by county training and testing them against not only the best players in Clare, but across Ireland as well. I know Emma played a few games in the National League and Dermot and Seamus uh, and Stephen played a good lot of games for the Clare 20s as well. So that must be a boost for Kildicer going forward. I know as a club manager, you were probably demoralised not to see them at training and not getting them as much as you wanted around the lads. But uh, at the same time, when they come back from the county training, you probably see the upside and the advantages of that as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose, first of all, like we, we have a big panel of players. We have 30, 30, pan, uh, 30 players this year on the panel. So, um, you know, it's, it's even if you don't have your county players, you'll always still have 15 to 20 lads training every night anyway. You know, with them on the, the toe, like we have 25, 26 to train on every night. At the moment, so like, uh, and it's it, it is it is a bonus, obviously, to have that caliber of player that are there. You know, which, as you said, Emmett, Diem, and Seamus, Kieran O'Brien, you know, um, Steve, there and under twenty, and then you've uh, other young lads like Connor Hassett coming through. You know, that will probably be on that team in, in next year. We also have had like uh, uh, Kieran, um, Rory McMahon, Shane McNeil, you know, Rob, Rob Ayers, Ayers, Keith yeah. O'Connor, Jerry Kelly, like. Past and previous players as well that were on county setups, you know. So we have a great balance throughout. Like you know, we have a series. They're serious players, like at the end of the day, like and they're, you know, they'll be they'll be forced to be reckoned with uh, going forward. I'd say you know for Clare as well. Like uh, I can see Dermot, maybe Seamus getting onto that county panel as well in 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 a year's time or two. You know. Yeah, and I suppose uh, Noel as well. Uh, if you look at the tie, it's probably when I mean, you look at the senior championship, the game that springs to mind is uh, obviously Milton and Kilmore and Brickin. But the intermediate championship, the game that springs to mind in everyone, uh, probably the, when you look at probably the top four contenders for the intermediate championship, no doubt pe people when they put down the probably one of the first two names that came to their mind was Kildice and Corfin. But it's, I know it's uh, not the, the ideal draw as such for both clubs, but obviously. And if you want to play Corfin, it's very much better to play them now than probably play them in a winner's round where it's complete knockout. And I suppose both clubs who will probably go hell for leather to win the game, it's going to be very much little in it. But also both clubs will know whatever come the right result, at, you know, 60 minutes, whatever the result is. They probably, so both clubs will know, well, we need a bit more work to do or clubs will know, right, we're in a real good stand here if we come through it. So... I suppose there's pros and cons of drawing um, a formidable outfit like Corofin as well in the, in the first round. Yeah, of course. Uh, Corofin ourselves know each other fairly well as well. Like we've been playing challenges against each other there um, down through the years. I'm um, a seven column there. We'd be ringing each other there every year, you know, to get a challenge. So all our games, um, you know, last year we played them in the in the league in Division Two. It was a close in Congress. I think it was only a point in it. At the end, um, all our challenge games have been close encounters. You know, um, they're a solid team. They have a, they have a good player set up as well. Uh, Jamie Malone there and uh, the Cahill's like, you know, a few minor lads coming through. Like, so they're, they're, they are a, they're a good team. Like, you know, um, getting them in the first round um, doesn't really, I don't think, bother me or, or call them, you know. Um, it's, we're two, probably two of the top favourites anyway, probably. To, to move on into maybe a semi-final, hopefully, at least, anyway, you know, whether you win the front door or the back door, like, uh, so, like, to win, to, obviously, it would be a bonus to win to the winner's group and uh, top three there, um, come out and go to the semi-final, whether yeah. the loser's group, you know, you have a harder battle, maybe, 
Um, I think you have a game there on a Friday night if you come through that losers group and then maybe a game on a Monday night again, you know. So it just depends who's in that losers group and in that winners group and uh, the look of the draw maybe at that stage, you know. But uh, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good championship at the moment. Uh, you know, the draws are fairly even is what I can see. You know, all the teams are even. Uh, so it's hard, really hard to call any of them, like, you know, but... Uh, we're, we're happy enough. We didn't really mind who we got, you know what I mean? Like, we, we know we have to compete against uh, everyone anyway at some stage. If you need to win the Intermediate Championship, it doesn't really make a difference who you get drawn against because uh, you have to play best to be the best, you know. So, that would be the way we'd look at it, like, you know. So, hopefully, like, we'll see what happens on the day. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Noel, in, in terms of um, Cora Finn as well, we all know Jamie Malone was planning to go on his travels and obviously COVID had derailed that sort of, tra- that sort of travel arrangement. So if the championship had gone his way as normal, uh, I suppose Jamie would have been definitely out for Cora Finn. So that sort of throws up sort of scenarios as well as manager, managers and players who you probably planned, planned for or some clubs planned would be available to them or not available to them. So need become available or don't become available. Some guys probably based overseas that sort of can commit or communicate. I know Shannon Gale and one or two lads that were coming from from England overseas and because of COVID they can't make those, they can't commit this year. How has it sort of fared for Kildyser? Have you sort of lost anyone or gained anyone in terms of COVID? No, we haven't lost anyone anyway, you know. Um, so, as I said, we have a big panel at 29. They're all local, local. Uh, obviously, we have Rob Ayers, our goalkeeper, you know, coming down from Kildare, you know. Um, so, he's the one that's away. Otherwise, we're, we're blessed with, with, our, with, our big, with our big panel of 30 plus players. Uh, everyone is around, around Kildaisert, you know. Um, I think the furthest travelling is Rob, obviously, from Kildare, but everyone else is travelling just out from Innes. So uh, we, it hasn't affected us as such. So um, obviously losing the three months has affected everyone else. Like, but our, our lads, you know, everyone puts in a good workout with the, in the lockdown, you know. So they came back in a good place because, you know, and some of them are good and fresh, like, you know. So it's, uh, it didn't affect us in, in any way at all. Like, you know, we haven't lost any, any players as such. You know, and we've still the same amount of players that we had from last year as well, like, you know, so and extra as well coming up to the team like you know yeah, and I suppose, uh, Noel, I suppose one thing sp- speaking to Corfin, they're very much a dual sort of club. And I, I asked the question there to Corfin how many dual players that they would have playing in the hurling round. And I, I sort of threw a guess maybe at 10 or 11. I was surprised that the answer is probably up on 18 or 19 that they have dual in both sort of panels. But looking at this from a Kildicer, uh, bear me wrong, I could be wrong on this, but as far as I know, Kildicer don't have any sort of dual players. So the whole hurling equation is probably out the window for you in terms of the, the hurling championship being on the week before the football. It doesn't really affect G uh, at all. So you probably have the full pick of trainings for, for most nights where some hurling dual clubs, maybe like Door Bearfields, for example, Corfin, that are trying to juggle both and trying to uh, the hurling being on the week before. Do you see that as an advantage or a disadvantage? Because uh, probably those core fin lads will probably have a championship game, although it's hurling, but they'll have it under their legs. They'll have a full 60 minutes of full intensity, given that there's so many of them crossover. So they'll probably have a championship game as such under their legs. It's not football, but uh, do you see that as an advantage or disadvantage? Or obviously then, but obviously then you have all your players for training while you're not sort of, it's not broken up. You're not trying to pull them rain from a hurling manager and trying to get lads for one night or two nights. So how is this, what, how, what, do, what do you make of it? Um, f- obviously, like to be a dual club, obviously it must be, it's very hard. Obviously, um, starting out, I suppose, I wouldn't know anything about dual clubs. I just know that you'd obviously have to have a good relationship between two managers, between the, the hurling and, and football managers. That would be the, the most critical thing, the communication there, uh, the deal that you'd strike, you know, even to try and probably organise a challenge is very hard for a, a dual club. And even to get a challenge against the dual cl- uh, club is very hard to get a challenge because the way it swings from hurling weekend to football weekend. Um, I, I, I'd say, will it be a disadvantage for to Corofin? I don't think so. Um, it'll be early in the year, you know, for, I know you'll have the, foot, uh, the hurling on before the football, like, but um, I, I'd say they have such a good pick of players anyway, like, you know, um, 
if, if your hurlers come through the first weekend injury free, you know, and I'm sure a week, uh, one training session between a hurling game and a football game, you're in a good position to play the, the football game the week after, you know. Um, so I, I don't say it would be, I'm sure it's very hard, I'm sure a dual club. I've gone through this from underage level all the way up to senior. They know how to deal with it, you know. Um, so for us, you know, we just concentrate on ourselves, uh, what we can do. And, uh, you know, we, we really worry about the opposition until the day comes, you know. So we always concentrate on ourselves fully, like, you know, so that's the way we'd stand at that. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, Noel, in terms of Corfin last year, looking back uh, for them, it was probably uh, things went away after that core Clare defeat, uh, conceding five goals and probably knocked the stuffing out of them going into that relegation final against Kilrush. And while Kilrush probably put up a brave challenge to Clundigad and they were well in that game, I suppose the game was dead and buried for Corfin. I suppose Kilrush had a bit of momentum going into that relegation final. You know yourself, momentum, how critical it is in football. But for Corfin last year as well, they were without a county player for three quarters of the year, all the year. He probably missed Clarendon in Garrod or Cahill. And you know yourself how critical Garrod is, is to them. And I suppose Garrod is going to be back now for this championship. So it's not only Jamie you have to look at as a scoring threat. There is Garrod there. His younger brother, Dermot, a fantastic footballer. I know myself, I had him in, in, in terms of four years of county development. Just an absolute magician. He's the same age as Connor Hassett. He'll be available to them this year. And Robert Mounsey and Kevin Keane, two two county minors in 2018. They're a year older as well. So Corfin do possess an awful lot of young talent as well and firepower. And obviously a player of Garrod's sort of magnitude not being back again this year. Corfin are probably not going to be so they will be reliant on Jamie for scores but Jamie's not going to have to kick 10 or 12 points or 13 points that he had to do last year with all those boys not available Yeah, yeah the, the, the force, like, I'd, say, I'd say we're going to be very evenly matched uh, what you said there like you know they the have the firepower up front you know they have a good balanced team throughout midfield into their backs um, as I said every time we play them um, we're equal pegging uh, we've got that firepower, we have the midfield and we have the backs as well, we have a goalkeeper, you know, so we're well balanced as well uh, throughout the field. We have we have great impact subs and we have a great balance that way, like, you know, uh, Corofin obviously, like, you know, there'll be a threat up front, uh, it'll be a threat everywhere around the field, you know, um, so I'd say it'll be the just the battles of, of, of player on player, um, get the matchups right both sides, you know, they'll be looking at us, we'll be looking at them. Um, on the day, then it just depends on on who goes to show up. You know, referees' decisions in close games always can can change a game at, at the end of a game, especially if it's tight coming in the last five ten minutes of a game. Um, just depends on injuries coming into games, how fit uh, teams can get now between between the lockdown and and the first round. The championship wasn't really much for five weeks. You know, to get yourself in a, in a championship uh, position, so. It's uh, it's a toss of a kind at the end of the day. Who's who's going to come out of this? Um, who's going to come out of this game? Like you know. Yeah, and I suppose uh, no. I I've, I've spoken to a few sort of clubs uh, managers already into the media. Not really. I've not really given away their names as such, but they're, they're probably lower down the picking order in terms of honours. But they spoke to me about the troubles uh, being back three weeks of trying to arrange uh, challenge matches within the county. Now these clubs aren't involved in the Garmin Cup as well, so. Obviously, some clubs are speaking to Milltown, Kilmoyer, Brick, and some of those clubs with senior aspirations, Cracklow, they've been all be able to go outside the county and arrange challenge matches, go on the challenge match circuit. How's it been like for you, Kildyser, in terms of trying to find challenge games? You're probably only back three weeks as well. Have you had much success in that, or do you, do you have to, are you going outside the county route? No, we haven't, we haven't even thought about going outside the county. I think, I think it's always good to stay within your county and play the teams that are at your level. You know, um, for us, we'll always try and obviously get a senior team, you know, to, to play against. Um, so it has been all about this time. We've had, we get plenty of uh, phone calls about challenges. Uh, you know, I've had around five phone calls there in the last week for challenges. Um, I, we've only made one or two ourselves. Um, we entered our Garmin Cup anyway last year, so we'll stay again uh, with Bally Vaughan, you know, so 
uh, this week, this weekend, um, you know, and the winners of that then you to a quarter final for next week, the 18th. Uh, so hopefully, if we get over Belly Vahan, um, if we don't get over Belly Vahan, we have a challenge organised for next week again, anyway. So I think teams are aiming for around the three games um, between the, the start of the, the end of lockdown and championship. I think that'll be enough. I think if you win four games or more, you risk injury to players. Um, we're asking, we're, we're asking as coaches and managers a lot from, from players, you know, um, to try and get themselves match fit in a very short space of time. Um, a lot of these players probably running the roads a lot, 5Ks, 10Ks, you know, just running straight lines. Um, come out onto the field in, you're going left, right, backwards, forwards, you know, speeding up. It's a totally different fitness level. And, you know, I've, I've been hearing a lot of players getting around the county and the country getting injured now at the moment. Like, so... You know, it's, it's, it's probably just enough, as I said, two or three challenges, I'd say, before a championship and go into the championship fairly fresh, like, you know. Yeah, I suppose, uh, Noel, I've talked to one or two teams as well uh, in terms of the O'Gorman Cup. He entered for the O'Gorman Cup. Obviously, if more teams had known what would have happened this year, then probably more teams would have entered for the O'Gorman Cup. He probably signed on at the start of the year, so you're in before it happens. But in terms of the O'Gorman Cup, speaking to Milltown, speaking to other teams that are involved in it as well, they're probably using it to look at probably from 15 down as far as 2025 in terms of options, in terms of what may be needed and giving those guys a chance to probably break into the starting team. You mentioned that Neil Dyson, you have a big panel of over 30 lads. I presume it's the incentive to build winning momentum in terms of the Garmin Cup or is it incentive to really see what options have I now? Are you, are you treating as, well, I'm going to look at what I have from maybe 15 down and what guys uh, could break onto the team and maybe seeing what, because we know county games, championship footballs, it's not the 15 who, who start that win the game, it's the 15 that finish, they're on the field at the end, so it's very much a 20-man game, so the Garmin Cup it must be a good chance for guys who are going well at training that mightn't have featured or got more football to put the, step, to put the hand up and say, listen, Noel Gary, if you need me there with 20 minutes to go, listen, you know, you saw what I've done in the Garmin Cup, I you uh, you know what I'm capable of. Uh, so if you need me, I'm there to get the job done for you. So that must be is that the way you're looking at it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why we enter the Gorma Cup every year. Um, you know, it's a great competition that way. If you have a big panel, uh, if you don't have a big panel, it's probably hard to get in there because you're probably play, if you're playing a Gorma Cup in in uh, you know pre. Pre COVID, you could say you were playing league, O'Gorman Cup, league, O'Gorman Cup every week, you know, and it was tough on players. So when you have a big panel, it's brilliant. Um, definitely, yeah, you're you're trying to you're trying to obviously get the, the best team you can out for championship. Like, and in order to do that, like you have to have these players that are um, you know on the fringes of breaking onto the team, um, players that you mightn't have seen in the past because there are younger lads coming out onto the team, and you have to see them in very you know, good competition challenges are grand, but you can't beat a good competition, you know, and especially O'Gorman Cup because you up, you could be up against the likes of uh, Cool Clare, you know, Lissy Casey, as you said, Milltown, Kilmurray Brick and all the top teams in his diamond, you know, so that's great. Like, and when it's a competition, you know, you get players onto that field and they know that they have a, a chance to get onto the starting team for championship. Uh, put in 15, 20 minutes of, of a good spell in a Garmin Cup, like, you know, you're, you're, you're in the running straight away for championship, like, you know, so it's a great competition. You know, I think more clubs you get involved in it, um, especially if you have a big panel anyway, and get all those players, you know, that mightn't get much game time throughout the year, and, and it's probably um, the downside of adult football has gone so, you know, it's gone so, um, I suppose, professional, you know, and there's a lot at stake. That players, you know, are trying to get are doing their best to, to stick stay at adult level, but if they're not getting games, they might want to stay on. So the Gorma Cup and the league, you know, championship, it's all good. Like so, players are some players are happy enough, like with a half an hour of good football, good game underneath their belt, you know, and then the their contenders in for the for the team and they're running into the championship. Yeah, I suppose uh, no. Lastly, uh, before I let you go, in terms of um, 
the build up you're back three weeks you probably have a some guys have come back to, uh, you've played, you mentioned one or two challenges. Have you any real injury concerns? Anyone that's probably touch and go for the first round uh, that's going to be a race against time or have you any sort of sort of needles or knocks or any sort of long-term injuries that probably if you get to the semi-final that a lad could be backed in but will definitely be out for the opening round or two? No. At the moment, uh, thank God, uh, touch wood anyway. So, so far, we got over the, the first challenge okay without any injuries, you know. Um, obviously, just a few bangs and bruises and, and we're playing a senior team, like, you know, and there's going to be, you know, a bit of competitive nail out in the middle of the field, hard hitting hits, you know, at senior level, like, that's, that's, that's the way you have to be. So, our players are, are up to the match. They're, they're looking after themselves. They've, they've um, built themselves well over the lockdown, you know. Um, they're well able to take the hits now. Uh, even our young lads up to our, our our more experienced lads like you know so nothing bad just a few knocks and bruises the usual you know and and, and the next night of training you're back flying it again like you know so you know we as I said we have another two games left before championship anyway like you know so we'll see how we get on in touch wood hopefully we don't uh, get any injuries uh, between now and then but at the moment we're, we're in a good place like you know I suppose lastly, the last thing for me to say to you, uh, Noel Gary and everyone involved in Kildare, we wish you a very prosperous uh, intermediate championship campaign. Hopefully you reach the, the final step in that ladder this year and achieve what she and all the Kildare players, management and supporters have been looking to do for a long time to achieve that senior status. We wish you all the best to look and uh, from all of we to say, hopefully you look back on the year which COVID-19, which is a, uh, has been horrendous for so many people that it'll be a joyous and a momentum one come uh, November for Kildeister and everyone involved in Kildeister Gaelic football. Thanks a million, Noel. Okay, Jim. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.